Okay, so following on from uh, need identification uh, and list of desirable properties for your need, to meet your need. And I would emphasize that that's really the most important part of this journey, uh, looking really carefully at the, the condition, the competitor products, uh, and really funneling into the unmet need. Uh, the next thing we want to do is think about materials that might meet those needs. And so, uh, I mean, we had a whole lecture on materials and the idea of that was to go, well, there's a, <clears throat> a series of synthetic and natural polymers that are available. Uh, the synthetic ones are the, I showed you the commercial ones. Um, and I guess that gives you a place to start. So you can go and look uh, at the ones that are already out there, or you can uh, use the other information I gave you about natural materials uh, to formulate a list of you know, unmet needs and then match them with material properties. And so in, in our example here, uh, our unmet needs were, you know, around mechanics and around biology. And so it's simple uh, as selecting a material and going down that checklist. So for our material, we're going to use silk, um, but kind of we come to silk on the basis of um, it had to have this collection of properties that's not available in every polymer. So we're looking at uh, it being compliant and having matched mechanical properties to the tissue, but also being long lasting and strong. So already those two things together narrow the list pretty considerably. Uh, but then <clears throat> now promoting endothelial cells while also being blood compatible, that narrows it even further. So now we're in a range where we needed to be kind of a little bit hydrophilic, probably a natural material is going to do better. Um, and then down the bottom, I've got inhibit smooth muscle cells, which is a bit of a higher order function that, um, there's not a lot of materials that we have evidence for, not even for silk actually, um, and then a viable path to manufacture. And so I bring up some muscle cells to go, well, the other thing I was going to say about this is that, you know, the comprehensive list you make for unmet need is never really going to be met completely uh, by a material. And so you want to try and check as many boxes as you can in your list uh, and I guess focus on the key ones. And so the key ones for our, for us are, Certainly mechanics because you kind of have a blood vessel that, ex that explodes. So it's got to be long lasting and strong. Uh, some compliance and matching with the vascular is going to make it better. And then some basic compatibility around uh, cells and blood. Uh, so yeah, I guess I've already told you where we're going to look at silkworm. So uh, silkworm silk is a natural material. It's, it's, it's made from silkworm cocoons. Uh, literally, we take the cocoons in the lab and we, uh, <clears throat> we cut them up. And then there's a two part process once we've cut them. Uh, we have to separate uh, the two components of silk because one of them, sericin, is kind of the glue that holds the cocoon together. Uh, sericin is kind of pro-inflammatory and a little bit cytotoxic, so it needs to be removed from your biomaterial. And then uh, associated with that, you've got the fibroin, and it's silk fibroin that actually is the biomaterial. So uh, there's a process of physically cutting up the cocoons, uh, and then there's this kind of washing and dialysis step where we... Um, separate those two components and we're left with just the fibroin and then there's a follow-on step where we're uh, dissolving the fibroin into a solution so we can use it for materials manufacture now um, around properties uh, I think you'd want to have it so there's some evidence that the material you've chosen has some of these things on your checklist that you've talked about so uh, for silk it's been pretty well characterized over a number of years that the the mechanics is actually very tunable so that's one of its great strengths. So uh, in the data I've got in the slides, um, we went to some effort to match uh, the mechanic properties of silk with a rad aorta and compare it to the commercial EPTFE. And so the, the two things we're showing there, Young's modulus, which are elasticity and uh, tensile strength, which uh, yeah, it's overall strength. And you can see we've, we've tried really hard to match it, silk and rad aorta, and you know, it's by definition, very mismatched to EPTFE. So it'd be good for you to look at your own material and the some of the physical requirements and try and get a sense of the matching, uh, if that's appropriate. And then also we've looked at some uh, basic cell compatibility and uh, what's shown in the slide again is, you know, endothelialization and then uh, some some basic blood compatibility. So in those uh, two bottom panels, the, the amount of green uh, is linked to the fibrin amount. So more green is less compatible with blood so silk is more compatible with an EPTFE than NPCL and then down the bottom it's you know a whole blood assay so less red is better so silk is less red than EPTFE and PCL so you want to have some some basic in vitro evidence but again that's linked to the lectures we've been having on you know lab evaluation um, 
And then finally, just some last considerations about this. I would say that uh, you want to consider if your material is kind of cost effective and available in quantity. So one of the strengths of silk is that it's really cheap uh, and we can make buckets and buckets of it. Uh, from a regulation point of view, uh, silk graphs exactly are not explicitly approved, uh, but silk is approved for other applications like sutures and wound healing. So that takes you back to my first lecture around regulation and definitions. Um, so if your material is either approved for this purpose or approved for another purpose, that's something. Uh, and then something about sterility as well. So s silk is um, compatible with clinical sterilization paths. And these things just start to lead you to think to the actual literal pathway you're going to use to take your material into either an animal model or into a human.